Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Rodney, and I'm back. And I thought I was kind of done for the day. Um, but then my messy spirit said, go back on Instagram. <laughs> yeah. And I went back on Instagram, and this is what I have come across, okay? Um, this is according to the Daily Mail. I went to Google after Instagram. But this is according to the Daily Mail, all right? iHeart Media Offices is rated by feds as Breakfast Club star DJ Envy's business partner, Caesar Pena, is arrested in a multi-million dollar Ponzi scam. Um, Caesar Pena, 45, was arrested in New Jersey on Wednesday. Uh, they say he is a business associate of DJ Envy and a frequent guest on The Breakfast Club. iHeart Radio offices were reportedly raided by federal agents in the probe. So a business partner of The Breakfast Club co-hosts DJ Envy, or as, DJ, uh, as Rick Ross likes to call him, DJ Envy. Remember he got down to the internet and told EJ, DJ Envy that his wife could be his pickleball, pickle, pickleball polisher? <laughs> Why say Rick Ross was why say Rick Ross was dragging that man? <laughs> um Rick Ross, we still ain't forgot about you though. We still ain't forgot about how the the wing stops that you own, even though I know that you're probably not over the day-to-day -day operations. You just own them and make your money. But it's still nonetheless, girl, you are the captain of that ship. And they said that the, the people were not being paid. So we still ain't forgot about that and how how insensitive you were to the situation. And after the story broke that the that the employees that work for the wing stops that you own or a part owner or whatever. Right. They weren't getting paid. And then you started posting receipts of you out shopping. Or old receipts of you shopping in the past. Nonetheless, it was very insensitive. Excuse me. Sorry, y'all. A business partner of The Breakfast Club, co-host DJ Envy, has been arrested on a federal wire fraud charge in, a, in an alleged Ponzi-like real estate scheme. You know, we talked about this the other day. We didn't really go into details. Uh, you know, DJ Envy name has been thrown into it, of course, because he's connected to it. But, you know, DJ Envy, from what I understand, has not been arrested. He hasn't been charged with anything. Um, hopefully, I'm, I mean, girl, <laughs> I don't care. But hopefully for Gia's sake, you know, you know they got a, a tribe called Quest over there. Um, they ain't got nothing to do with it because, you know, some of y'all, no, you know, Shay, some of y'all trust y'all husband so bad to the point where, girl, y'all, they'll just come home and have y'all signing all types of paperwork. You don't know what you signing. You know what I'm saying? You just signing your little name away, signing your little name away. Well, my husband told me to sign her. Baby, can you sign this? What is that? It's, it's some stuff that got to do with the houses we flipping. Sign here, sign here. So hopefully they ain't got nothing to do with it. And Gia ain't put her name on nothing. You know what I'm saying? Um, Caesar Pena, 45, was arrested on Wednesday. Um, as prosecutors said, uh, at his New Jersey home, flipping... Um, Oh, I'm sorry. And this New Jersey home. Basically, girl, what I just said, girl, they say he's scheming people out of millions on false promises of a huge return. Um, they say that he basically appeared on the break. I'm just going to just read them, you know, skim over it. I'll put the article uh, in the uh, the link to the article in the description box. He uh, appeared on the popular Breakfast Club radio morning show hosted by DJ Envy and Charlemagne the God. Um, he talked about his investment um, schemes. Uh, DJ Envy, whose real name is Rayshawn Cassie, has not been charged with wrongdoing, although a criminal complaint identifying him only as an individual. Uh, one cause, have him, wait, cause, wait, hold up. Although a criminal complaint identifying him only as individual one calls him Pena's business partner, saying his frame was to key the alleged scheme. Girl. So again, I just want to be clear. That DJ Envy has not been charged with any wrongdoing. Um, as part of the probe, federal agents raided the offices of iHeartMedia, which syndicates the Breakfast Club and sees electronic uh, devices, according to WNBC TV.
DailyMail.com has reached out to iHeartMedia for comment. DJ Envy appeared on The Breakfast Club as usual on Thursday morning, but the show did not address Pina's arrest. I'm sure they didn't. Hello. Um, prosecutors say that since 2017, Pina has solicited investments from, fall, from small investors to flip homes in New Jersey and elsewhere, promising returns of 20 to, uh, 20 to 45% in five months. But instead of investing the funds as promised, the complaint alleges that Pina siphoned some of the funds for personal use and used uh, other victim funds to pay off early investors in the Ponzi-like scheme. Girl, I'm not gonna read. I'm not reading the rest of it because it's, it's, I'm not reading the rest of this. Um, but y'all get what's going on, honey. I, I hope in this case it ain't birds of a feather flock together. But yeah, you guilty by association. Um, I hope you know. Like I said, girl, I don't keep up with DJ Envy. He get on my nerves sometimes. Um, but. Like I said, he hasn't been arrested or charged or anything, so maybe maybe he didn't do anything wrong. Or maybe it was this guy and whoever else was probably involved. Mm-hmm. I know D- <laughs> girl, you know DJ, I know DJ Envy girl. I know DJ Envy over there probably shaking in his boots. Even if you ain't, let me say something. Even if you have not done anything wrong, just to even be tied to some mess like this, I think would have anybody scared. DJ Envy could very well be innocent and don't know what's going on. But the simple fact that somebody who you're in business with, right, who you've invited down to your job to speak to the public, as you know what I'm saying? And then a turn around one day and you wake up and they talk about your business partner just got arrested because they say he's scamming and scheming. And girl, he's a stunt queen. Yeah. When stunt goes bad, girl, girl, he's a stunt queen. Your business partner is a stunt queen, DJ Envy. Honey, listen to this. Y'all agree? This is according to the Neighborhood Talk. Social users say it's not fair Drake tied Michael Jackson's record for most number one hits because Michael Jackson's numbers weren't based on streams. His numbers were strictly sales. Um, So basically, this is according to Billboard, uh, uh, Billboard, uh, Drake for all the dogs. I'm sorry. Hold up. I was reading the wrong thing. Yeah, I'm sorry. Complex music. Drake officially ties Michael Jackson as the male, as the male soloist with the most number one hits, 13, in Hot 100 history. Let me say something. I'm not trying to take away nothing from nobody. I don't understand the whole streaming stuff now. You know, I grew up in a time where, girl, when we wanted music, we had to catch a ride to the stove, okay? Um, You had to drive yourself, walk, and you would have to go to the Walmart, right? The best buy the Target and buy the actual albums, buy the actual singles. You know, the girls of a particular age, you know what I'm saying? We know that when singles came out, you would go to the store, the single, like where I'm from, we didn't have a lot of stores. We had a Walmart. So that's where everybody pretty much went. So anytime music would come out, you know, if I didn't have the money, I would ask my mama for two or three dollars, right? <laughs> you go to the store. You know, buy the cassette tape or once once DVDs came out, and it usually be like a dollar and some change, right? Two dollars maybe and some change. I don't know how the string. I I've read it. I don't still don't understand it. I know like a certain amount of downloads and streams equal like a sale. I don't know, <laughs> girl. You know, so I can get how some people could question whether it's Drake, Rihanna, Beyonce, Nicki Minaj, Taylor, whoever it is. I could see how they could question um, the numbers today versus the numbers from yesterday, right? Because back then you knew when an album was sold. 
you knew. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Now I just don't get the whole streaming stuff. I just don't get it. I don't really care, honestly, <laughs> but I just don't get it. If they say he tied with Michael Jackson, I guess he tied with Michael Jackson. Um, yeah. Girl, remember, girl, we used to, remember we used to, we used to go to go to the store. I remember. I can still. I can tell y'all some of the albums I bought. I remember when Destiny Child first came out. Girl, remember? I, I can tell y'all exactly the single uh, case. It was a white. It was a white photo. I mean, the background was white. And uh, oh no, that was an album. I'm thinking of the album. Never mind. I'm thinking about the album. I remember one time I bought Tamar's album. A lot of y'all thought that Love and Wall was her first album. Love and Wall was her second album. Um, Tamar came out, came out with her first album like in the late 90s, early 2000s. I think late 90s, actually. I remember I bought her album. It was $5. Her whole album was $5 at Walmart. Yes. The album still jumps. Because Quiet is just kept. Girl, the first album is better than Love and War. It really is. Um, but I remember purchasing purchasing Tamar's album. I remember purchasing Erica Badu's album, Mama's Gun. I used to love that. That's one of my favorite albums of all time. Singles, No, No, No at Walmart. I remember my first album that I, not I bought, but I got for Christmas. I can't remember. I know it was either one or the two. Either it was the Fugees or either it was Missy Elliott's Super Duper Fly. When I tell you, I was a stand of Missy Elliott's girl. Oh, I was a stand. <laughs> oh, I was a stand. But I remember I got, I know for a fact I didn't buy those because I worked in high school. I worked at this little restaurant. Uh, but I know for a fact I didn't buy those because I didn't have no money and I think I was too young. I think I was in middle school when Super Duper Fly came out. I think so. I remember getting one. I, I remember getting those albums for Christmas, but I can't remember which one came first, the Fugees. And I used to be in love with Lauren Hill. I used to love the way Lauren Hill used to sing. But yeah, those were the days. Those were the days you, you had. You had to go to the store and buy the albums. Yeah, I remember, girl. This one, that's what I be saying, girl. Like, I really feel like I'm like an old person on the inside. I get like I don't like, I think that's just anybody honestly when it comes to change like I don't I don't like change sometimes sometimes I know it's be sometimes change is for the best but you know we we kind of push back on change I remember when the whole stuff like the like remember it was the um iPods what is it called yeah iPod that's what it's called right remember when that stuff started coming out I I was like I don't want to do that I won't I'm listen no I'm do I only do albums. It took me a while, even when like Apple Music, I like it took me. I was still want to listen to an actual CD. It took me a while to get hip to the whole Apple Music, you know, thing of it all. It just never was my stilo. It just wasn't. I want to listen to the album. I want to get the album, put it inside the disc, and I want to press play. That's what I want to do. And then, girl, eventually once, you know, you kind of like, so you kind of like, so getting with the times. Now, girl, <laughs> I couldn't even tell you how to probably work an album <laughs> or a DVD. <laughs> even though I still have a box full of DVDs. I'm keeping my DVDs because I feel like, girl, one day all my DVDs are going to be worth a lot of money. That's what I feel like. I feel like one day, girl, all my DVDs, girl, it's, I'm just going to make a killing. <laughs> Hello. So I, I still have some of my albums from back in the day, and I still have a box of DVDs that I'm gonna keep. So maybe like in like twenty years, and even if that, if I don't, I'm gonna tell my nieces to keep them just in case. So yeah, yeah. I think because I I don't think girl, I th I don't think they'll be worth nothing in twenty or thirty years. I'm gonna tell, and if I just I just give them to my nieces and tell them to keep them, because then by the time they get to a certain age, girl, they might be worth a little penny or so. You know what I'm saying? Anyways, girl, shout out to Drake, I guess, honey, with his messy ass. Drake is old messy queen. 
Um, what else is going on? Oh, Oprah reveals she only made $35,000 for Oscar-nominated film, The Color Purple. It changed everything. The Oprah Winfrey has definitely come a long way since the beginning stages of her career. The famed media personality made her film debut in 1985 in the critically acclaimed project, The Color Purple. Oh. <laughs> the sun, you've been on my mind. Oh, the sun. Girl, that's my song. And girl, the end of it, girl, with Sue, with Sue, busted that church house. Girl, she knocked that door open. She was like, Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, I tell you, that is my song. It's honest. And she walked up to her old judgmental ass daddy. It was like, See, daddy, sinners have soul too. <laughs> and they hugged each other. <laughs> Girl, yes, baby. Should tore up that church house. Yes, ma'am. This is walking that church house. Got it. Try it. To my yeah. Anyways, guys, previously reported in December, a musical version of the coming of age period drama film based on the stage musical musical of the same name will give movie lovers. A chance to, uh, to see the color purple through a new lens. This time around, Sophia played by Danielle Brooks. Um, some other celebs who are part of the film are Fantasia. Um, she's going to play Seely. Taraji P. Henson is going to play uh, Suge. Uh, her is going to be Squeak and Ciara as Nettie Harris. And ha <sighs> Girl, and Holly Bailey as young Nettie. Oprah won't appear in front of the camera, but she uh, was still heavily involved involved with the pro with the twenty twenty three musical, serving as an executive producer. I can't be I can't even begin to tell you what it means to me, a person who wanted nothing more in life than to be in the color purple. And God taught me to surrender. That was a big lesson for me. They were only offering thirty five dollars thirty five thousand dollars to be in this film, and that is the best thirty five thirty five thousand dollars I ever earned. It changed everything. Shout out to Oprah. All right, y'all. Well, that's all I had. I just really wanted to come down here and talk about Caesar Pena. Let y'all know what was going on, honey, and how the people bust down. <laughs> how the people, <laughs> girl, girl, I'm girl. I don't know if DJ Eminem was at work with them people. I know, I, I know when them feds came to that office. I know they was in there, girl, about the shit on themselves. I know they was. Girl, can you imagine sitting on the motherfucking radio talking about, yeah, y'all, welcome to the breakfast club. Girl, the doors bust open. Girl, you be like, girl, what's going on? <laughs> sitting there trying to be messy, talk about people. And girl, these white black, these white people and black people, and these Hispanic people, girl, these feds, these FBI agents, honey, they don't bust down the door. Talking about, girl, where's the electric? Girl, we taking everything. I know that was like, oh shit, buddy. All right, y'all, I'm gone. I'll talk to y'all later. Have a good day. Bye, y'all.